hey man, sign up for my course, make a hundred thousand dollars, and you're gonna be driving Lamborghinis. What's another reason people don't get certified? Negative perceptions. So some individuals believe that certifications are not necessary or that they do not accurately reflect one's skills and abilities, viewing practical experience as more valuable. Now, I do agree with this. I've said this a thousand times. When it comes to the order of importance as it relates to IT, the number one thing is who do you know and who knows you? That can help you bypass all types of stuff in life. You can just jump to the top of the line with that. But if you don't know anybody, you're trying to go out there and get a job. The next thing is you need to have some type of experience. That's the next most important thing. Well, if you ain't got no experience working in tech, you need to at least come to that job interview with a with an IT certification. And then after that, in my personal opinion, is college degrees and all that other stuff. The thing is, experience is king as it relates to certifications. But when you guys are out there are trying to apply for a job on Indeed and LinkedIn and all these other places, if you don't have the certification, oftentimes they're not even going to, they're not going to look at your resume, unfortunately. So you can have all the experience in the world, know how to flip a computer, do all this, that, and the third, you know about everything. But if you don't have a certification, you might not get looked at for the job. And the reason why is because when you guys submit these resumes into these job posting sites, they explicitly say, hey, A plus, net plus, security plus. And if you don't have it, the AI system that scans that stuff is just going to reject your resume before you even get a chance to sit down and talk to a person to demonstrate and explain, I know what the heck I'm doing. That's kind of how it works. Now, it shouldn't be that way, but you also got to think about how many people are applying for these jobs. So when you see a job posting on Indeed for like a system administrator, or junior network admin or even a help desk job. Dude, it might be a thousand people applying for that one job. How do you weed out a thousand people so you can find at least five people to interview or 10 people to interview? Well, you got to put these stipulations in there. You got to have this certification or you got to have this college degree because that's another big thing right there. A lot of people complain about why do they want you to have a college degree to apply for an entry level IT job? Well, the thing is, you don't need a college degree. They're just doing that just to cut down on the number of people that's about to apply for this job. And unfortunately, you know, that's just one of those things that's kind of somewhat hard to get around if you're going just strictly through an automation process like that. That's why I say this is why you guys need to go subscribe to Before the Billions. Before the Billions actually talks about this stuff a lot in detail. And he actually explains the importance of why you guys need to go to networking events. He's going through this process right now. He's documenting his ups and downs. And like I say, I'm, I'm just going to say, because he put this on his channel. He recently got laid off due to whatever reason. I don't know. But he's documenting his experience of applying for jobs, going to networking events so that he can make connections with people so that he can kind of bypass the traditional submitting of the resume through Indeed, where he can meet somebody that works at this company over here and then they know the hiring manager and then he can probably get a referral so that he can go sit down and talk to the hiring manager and then explain his experience versus him trying to, oh, let me make sure I got my college degree. Let me make sure I got my all my search properly listed. He can bypass all that crap. So that's why you guys need to go support him. He gives you the play-by-play -play on how to do that. But if you can't, go to these networking events and you can't do that, then, you know, like I say, this slideshow says, um, you know, some people believe skills is more important than certs. And I do believe that to be true. But if you can't bypass the automated job posting site, because you don't know anybody that works at the company or whatever the case may be, or you haven't went to a networking event to get in contact with some people so you can reach out and talk to them through uh, LinkedIn or something like that. Well, you're going to have to get these certifications so that you can hopefully get a job interview. And then when you get to the interview, interview, you uh, hopefully know what the heck you're talking about, i.e. you've taken a course like mine where you got labbed up real good. You know how to do this. You know how to do that. You can explain your skill sets to the actual human being. Shout out to Dre, Tech G for president. I appreciate that. And I appreciate your channel membership. Thank you very much. Another reason why people do not get their IT certifications, changing industry requirements. So in fast evolving fields, the requirements for certifications can change rapidly, making it challenging for individuals to keep up and feeling uncertain about which certification to pursue. So 
the tech industry, you're not going to remain stagnant. You're not just going to go out there and get a job. Let me back that up. You can do that. I've actually interacted with a person that, that was like that. Matter of fact, I was on a live stream with Before the Billions some months ago. He had a guest on his show that worked in help desk, and this brother had been working in help desk for 16 years. No shade to the brother. Maybe that's what this brother wants to do. He, he's content with his job, but I don't know too many people. I've never run across too many people that they just want to work help desk for the rest of their life. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with the help desk. It's a great starting point. It's one of the easiest ways to get an IT, but I always tell people you shouldn't be there no longer than 12 months, 18 at the most. That's enough time for you to learn what you got to learn, figure out what you want to do in IT, get whatever necessary certs, get whatever necessary skills you need to build up your resume, throw that thing back out there and go get another job. But if that's where you want to be, that's where you want to be. But anyways, as far as this slide is concerned, the tech industry is always changing. Just look at the introduction of artificial intelligence and how it's impacted our lives just over the last couple years. Rewind the clock back 10 years ago. AI was around 10 years ago, but it was nowhere near involved in our lives like it is today. What do you think the future is going to look like in the next 10 years as AI rapidly develops? even more. Our cloud technologies rapidly develop even more. What I'm saying is you become an IT professional and you want to make top dollar, move up. You want to make $100,000. You want to move to a senior management position to where, to where one day you're a chief technology officer, a chief information security officer, you know, something like that. You're going to have to constantly adjust to the times, keep up with the trends, keep up with whatever it is you got to keep up with, whether it's certification requirements or whatever. I don't freaking know. It could be a whole bunch of crap out there. I don't know. You have to keep up with whatever you got to keep up with. You can't just go into this thing thinking, hey, I'm just going to learn. A plus and I'm done. I mean, you can do that, but you can only get so far in life with that. Students who inquire about the A plus for me, I always let it be known. Hey man, this is the starting point. You're going to have to go get your network plus and your security plus after this. If you want a well-rounded understanding of how the IT industry works, you're going to have to go do these things right here. And then after that, you're going to have to make a decision. What do you want to do in tech? Oh, I want to be cybersecurity. Well, you're going to have to go get this cert or this cert. I want to do cloud technology. Well, you might have to go get this, sir. You're going to have to constantly keep learning and achieving things. And let me back that up because I don't want to make it seem like you're going to spend the rest of your career chasing certifications. That's, that's not what's going to happen. What, what's going to happen is you're going to have to go get the necessary certifications that are related to the job that you want, that your employer says you have to have. So if you decide, hey, I want to be, uh, I'm looking at my board over here. I want to be a, a network uh, architect or something like that. You might have to go get you a CCMA. Like you can't just stop at A+. plus. You can't just stop at network plus. You're probably going to have to go get some type of CCNA. You're going to have to go get specialized in something. That doesn't mean that you got to go get every certification in the world, but you can't just stop and be like, this is all I need to get and just think you're just going to move up. No, you're going to have to constantly adapt, get the necessary skills in your life and or certs so that you can move up, specialize and become that subject matter expert in life one day. That's just how this thing works. And it pretty much works like that in damn near any profession, to be honest with you. But as far as tech is concerned, it definitely works like that. So that's my slideshow, man. So let's, let's just fly through this real quick. One more time. These are the top 10 reasons people do not get certified. Reason one is a lack of time. That's the number one reason. People always say that something's going on. Well, you're going to have to make time if you want to get certified. There's no getting around that. Reason two, high costs. People look at training programs and they be like, man, that's too expensive. And some of them are expensive, but you have to weigh what is the ROI? If I pay this person this money, whether it's $100 or $2,000 or whatever, what am I to get at the end of this? What's at the end of the rainbow besides a certification? Is it just a certification or is it a mentor, a coach, somebody that can help me get a job and possibly help me start out above the help desk or how, whatever the heck it is I'm aiming for? You got to weigh the cost of these things, right? Don't just purely make a decision based off of cost. Fear of failure. The fear of failure, failing the exam can prevent individuals from even attempting to get certified. Like I said earlier, most people who use that as an excuse Nine times out of 10, these are people who haven't properly prepared to take the test, meaning they haven't sat down and did their due diligence to study to take the test. So now they're terrified of going to take the test because they know the odds are they're probably going to fail. Insufficient knowledge. People feel they don't have the necessary knowledge or experience to pass the exam, leaving them to delay or avoid the certification process altogether. So once again, this ties directly into picking a program or a mentor or signing up for a school, community college, whatever the heck it is that's, that's out there for you that you feel is best 
best for you. And uh, hopefully they got a solid, decent program in place or structured program in place to help you get from point A to point B. The first point is getting certified. And hopefully within that, you learn some type of skill sets that you can add to your resume, so on and so forth. For those of y'all who mess with your boy over here, Tech G, you will click on in the description box where it says study materials. You know, I got you covered for all budgets. But my advanced program is where I pour my all into you. But it does come at a price. Uncertain about the benefits. So once again, I get certified. What's going to happen? Well, depending upon the type of training you got and how well you were trained in addition to getting your certification, that could be the difference between you starting off at the help desk or you possibly getting a job paying $60,000, $70,000 at the door. But hopefully you find you a competent person that can explain that to you and not just somebody who's going to tell you, hey man, sign up for my course, make $100,000 and you're going to be driving Lamborghinis. I don't even drive a Lamborghini. So why would I tell you you're going to drive something that I don't even drive? I'm going to be realistic with you like, hey, Hey, this is what's going to happen. And this is how long it might take you to make $100,000, which is good money, especially if you're coming from a job where you make it $25,000, $30,000 a year. And all of a sudden, three, four years later, you make making $100,000. I think that's pretty damn good. Assuming, you know, you manage your money pretty well. But I'm not going to make no absurd promises about flying on private jets. I've never flown on a private jet a day in my life. So I'm not going to sit here and, and try to sell you on a private jet when I've never been on one. Lack of support. You need that support, whether it's your family, your friends, your co-workers, or you can come holler at Tech G, man. I give you all the support you need. I pat you on the back, hug you, all that stuff. No ditty. Procrastination. This is a big one right here. You need to uh, stop being lazy. You need to stop making excuses and just go out there and get it done. Complexity in the process. You don't have somebody to explain to you how this thing works because you're just watching a bunch of random TikTokers talking about a bunch of crap they don't know what the hell they're talking about. You come holler at somebody like me who's been doing this for a hot little minute, 20 plus years. I get you right out in these streets. Negative perceptions is another reason some individuals believe certs aren't necessary and skills are. Well, that's kind of true. But if you want to get a job and you're going through those traditional job posting boards, well, in order for your resume to be seen, you're probably going to have to have some type of certification. And then changing industry requirements. So once again, you keeping up with the times and not remaining stagnant. So those are the top reasons that Tech G believes people do not get certified.